The iMac has been a staple in the creative professional's arsenal for over a decade, and its latest incarnation, the iMac M3, continues to raise the bar for performance, design, and versatility. And in this video, we're gonna put the new iMac up against an older 2012 iMac that is still working. So first off, the display. One of the most significant changes in the iMac over the years has been its display. The late 2012 iMac had a 21.5 inch and a 27 inch LED backlit display. And around 2011, Apple also released the cinema displays that also use Thunderbolt and you can still find these for a couple hundred dollars on the internet. A friend's office building was giving away nine of these old displays. So I took two of them and I connected them up through the Thunderbolt port for a dual display on this old 2012 machine. While these displays were impressive at the time, they are no comparison to the new iMac M3's 24 inch 4.5 retina display. And the M3's display is incredibly sharp and detailed, making it very good for photo editing, video editing, gaming, and just a better viewing experience. The processor is another area where the iMac has seen significant improvement. The late 2012 iMac was powered by a quad-core Intel i5 or i7 processor. It was okay doing demanding tasks. It wasn't the greatest, and I did have many times where I had to leave this thing exporting overnight because it just took so long. Now the new iMac M3's chip is in a different league altogether. You've got 8 core CPU and up to 10 core GPU. The M3 chip delivers up to 2 times faster CPU performance and up to 4 times faster GPU performance than the i7 chips of the late 2012. Apple loves to show this graph in all their releases about how much faster these new M chips are compared to the Intel chips and it's really true. They just blow this thing out of the water. If you are thinking of an upgrade to the new Apple Silicon M chips, you will see a huge increase in speed. Storage is another important factor for video editors like myself and creative professionals. The 2012 came with 500 gigabytes. You could go up to one terabyte, that's all. With the new M3s, you can go up to two terabytes. And plus you're using SSDs on the M3, which are significantly faster than the old hard drive style. These M3 chips also get better power usage and the evolution of these chips really has increased light years since 2012. The graphics are also essential for video editors and creative professionals as they need to be able to render complex graphics and effects. And the late 2012 had the AMD Radeon HD discrete graphics card and was capable of handling most tasks. But once again, the new IMAX M3 graphics are even more powerful with eight core GPU and a hardware accelerated ray tracing. The iMac M3 can render complex graphics and effects so much easier the 2012 machine would really start to chunk along in programs like After Effects and 3D rendering programs where the iMac has its limitations, but it can usually get you through most of these projects without much frustration. Back in 2012, webcams weren't really as highly sought after as they are in this Zoom day and age, but the late 2012 had a 720p FaceTime HD camera, which was sufficient for most video conferencing and FaceTime calls, but now, the new M3's got a 1080p FaceTime camera with its advanced image signal processing and computational video. It can capture high quality video and photos in different lighting situations. And now with the new Sonoma running, you have access to video effects on the fly and image recognition happening inside the webcam. It's definitely another area that has made huge leaps and bounds. Looking at the backs of these machines and the ports that they offered, it may look like the 2012 iMac had a lot more. It had a super drive, it had an SD card slot, Firewire, Thunderbolt, Gigabit Ethernet ports. And while this was a good selection of ports, this new M3 comes in two flavors. The base model version only has two Thunderbolt ports, where the more expensive version comes with four, including two USB 3 ports, a high impedance headphone jack, and two Thunderbolt ports, and one can act as your 10 gigabyte Ethernet port. So I think Apple has been cutting down on the ports. It's just one way to save money and able to keep the cost relatively the same price over the last 10 years so these days it's up to you to get a hub or a dongle because these ports go really fast another useful add-on for the m3 is a studio display that also gives you more USB ports to plug into and also acts as a dual display to take advantage of so just for chuckles let's do a little quick time export 
we've got a 4k clip on both machines right now clip is seven and a half minutes Let's re-export this as a 1080p file, something easier to edit. I am doing this all the time. We'll put the timer on. We'll see how long this lasts. Two hours. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's so bad. Obviously, if you're doing any type of exporting, any type of video work, M3 is pretty impressive still. So as you can see, the iMac has evolved significantly over the years, and the new iMac M3 is the culmination of all of that progress. With the M3 chip running all that Retina display, the versatile features, the iMac M3 is really a great family computer and also can please a lot of video editors, graphic designers, and other creative professionals. And the best part is that the iMac M3 is still priced very competitively, starting at $12.99. This was a fully loaded version that has one terabyte of storage and it came in the low 2000s. So if you're looking for a more powerful and versatile computer that won't break the bank, check out these new M3 iMacs. And if you need something a little stronger for your work, definitely hit subscribe because we're gonna be testing out the M3 MacBook Pros, all flavors of them, putting them up against the M3 iMac and doing some speed tests. Thanks so much for watching. Hit that subscribe button and I hope to see you at the next one. Take care.